Ateliers in West, retreat from the harsh Wisconsin winters for Wright, his family, and the Taliers in Fellowship from November to April. Taliesin West, located in Scottsdale, Arizona, was Frank Lloyd Wright's winter home and studio. It served as a retreat from the harsh Wisconsin winters for Wright, his family, and the Taliesin Fellowship from November to April. This magnificent complex reflects Wright's innovative approach to architecture and his deep connection to the desert landscape. In 1937, Wright purchased several hundred acres of land in the desert foothills of the McDowell Mountains. He envisioned a desert utopia, constructing buildings that harmonized with the expansive desert environment. Wright believed Arizona needed its unique architectural style, inspired by the patterns and forms found in the natural desert landscape. The construction of Taliesin West began with Wright and his apprentices living in tents and using local materials like rocks, stone, and sand. The design evolved organically, reflecting Wright's philosophy of creating architecture that blends seamlessly with its surroundings. Wright's design for Taliesin West is a testament to his genius. He utilized desert masonry, a technique where local desert rocks were set within wooden forms and bound by a mixture of cement and desert sand. This method preserved the natural beauty of the desert environment while creating durable structures. This technique not only utilized the abundant natural materials, but also ensured that the structures blended seamlessly with the surrounding landscape. The rocks, with their tawny, sunburnt colors, such as orange, black, purple, and gray, were collected from the desert, making the buildings appear as organic extensions of the desert, including the landscape and the hills surrounding Taliesin West. The rocks were placed within wooden forms with their flat surfaces facing outward and bound together with a mixture of cement and desert sand. This method not only utilized readily available materials, but also created walls that appeared as natural extensions of the desert terrain. The process of desert masonry was labor-intensive and required careful planning and execution. Wright's apprentices played a crucial role in this construction method, meticulously selecting and placing each rock to ensure stability and aesthetic appeal. The walls built with desert masonry are robust and durable, designed to withstand the harsh desert climate while blending seamlessly with the environment. By carefully considering the materials available in the immediate surroundings, Frank Lloyd Wright was able to construct Taliesin West using materials that we would today consider organic and sustainable. This approach significantly reduced the carbon footprint of the project, as there was no need for extensive transportation of materials. Wright's focus was fundamentally rooted in traditional architecture, which utilized local materials to achieve the desired results. This method not only ensured harmony with the natural environment, but also exemplified a sustainable practice that aligns with modern principles of eco-friendly construction. Natural light played a crucial role in the design. Wright used translucent canvas for roofs, later replaced by plastic due to wear from the Arizona sun. The drafting room's canvas roof bathed the space in soft, natural light, creating an ideal work environment. The south-facing dining room featured roof overhangs that allowed horizontal light to enter while blocking harsh sunlight. Originally, Wright used translucent canvas for the roofs at Taliesin West. This choice allowed natural light to permeate the interiors, creating a bright and inviting atmosphere. The canvas roofs were supported by redwood beams, another natural material that added to the organic feel of the complex. One of the primary reasons Wright chose canvas for the roofs was its translucency. The canvas allowed natural light to filter into the interiors, creating a soft, diffused glow that illuminated the spaces without the harsh glare of direct sunlight. This natural lighting created a warm and inviting atmosphere inside the buildings, 
enhancing the connection between the indoor and outdoor environments. Wright believed that natural light was essential for a productive and pleasant work environment, and the canvas roofs were a perfect solution for achieving this. The canvas roofs also contributed to the aesthetic appeal of Taliesin West. The white canvas contrasted beautifully with the sunburnt colors of the desert masonry and the warm tones of the redwood beams. This contrast created a visually striking and cohesive design that was both modern and in harmony with the natural surroundings. The canvas roofs, with their light and airy appearance, gave the buildings a sense of openness and fluidity, further emphasizing Wright's philosophy of organic architecture. In the desert climate of Arizona, the choice of canvas roofs was also practical. The canvas provided shade and protection from the intense desert sun while still allowing for ventilation. This helped to keep the interiors cooler and more comfortable during the hot days. The flexibility of the canvas material also meant that it could be easily adjusted or replaced as needed, offering a practical and adaptable solution for roofing in the desert environment. In addition to the flexibility in light diffusion provided by the solar filter of canvas, a material that is adaptable and easy to work with, we can see in this image how the use of these white panels also served as solar reflectors. This design choice added diffused light through the reflection off the panels themselves. With these simple and ingenious mechanisms, it was possible to control not only the cross ventilation, but also the intensity of the light. The canvas panels allowed for precise management of the indoor environment, ensuring a comfortable and well-lit space that harmonized with the desert surroundings. While the canvas roofs were initially highly effective, the harsh desert conditions eventually took their toll on the material. The intense sun, wind, and occasional rainstorms caused significant wear and tear on the canvas, leading Wright to seek a more durable alternative. Over time, the canvas roofs were replaced with fiberglass, a material that provided the same translucency and light-diffusing qualities, but with greater durability and resistance to the elements. I would also like to add that the invention of using canvas in this project was not only ingenious, but also introduced the use of tension textile elements into architecture in a way that had never been done before. Wright's deep study and understanding of the local climate allowed him to devise a solution that was easy, economical, replaceable, and effective given the specific conditions of the desert environment. While subsequent issues did arise, as they often do when innovating with new materials, this was a vital part of the learning process and a testament to Wright's pioneering spirit. Keeping on the roof area, redwood beams were a prominent feature in the construction of Taliesin West. Wright favored redwood for its durability and natural beauty. The beams were used to support the roofs and create structural frameworks that complemented the desert masonry. The redwood's warm tones contrasted with the sunburnt colors of the desert rocks, adding depth and richness to the overall design. The redwood beams were used extensively throughout Taliesin West, serving as the primary structural support for the canvas roofs and other elements of the buildings. Wright's innovative use of these beams extended beyond their functional role. He employed them in a way that enhanced the architectural flow and harmony of the complex. The beams were designed to extend beyond the walls, wrapping around corners in elegant 90-degree turns. This not only provided additional structural support, but also created a sense of continuity and connection between the indoor and outdoor spaces. The exposed beams became a signature feature of Taliesin West, embodying Wright's philosophy of organic architecture by visually integrating the structure with the surrounding landscape. Redwood's natural resistance to decay and its ability to withstand the harsh desert environment made it an ideal choice for Taliesin West. The beams were not only strong and durable, but also adaptable, allowing Wright to implement his innovative design ideas. For instance, 
The redwood beam supported the translucent canvas roofs, which provided diffused natural light and cross-ventilation, essential for maintaining a comfortable indoor environment in the desert climate. The visual impact of the redwood beams cannot be overstated. Their warm hues added a natural, earthy quality to the buildings, harmonizing with the desert palette. Wright's careful consideration of color, texture, and material ensured that the beams contributed to the overall aesthetic cohesion of Taliesin West. Moreover, the beams' alignment and extension beyond the physical boundaries of the walls created a rhythm and pattern that guided the eye and enhanced the sense of spatial flow. This design approach emphasized the connection between the built environment and the natural surroundings, a core principle of Wright's architectural philosophy. Talking about the layout, Taliesin West emphasizes open spaces and expansive views. Wright strategically positioned the buildings to capture the stunning vistas of the McDowell Mountains and the surrounding desert. The use of large windows and open courtyards ensures that the occupants are constantly connected to the natural beauty outside. This connection to nature was a crucial aspect of Wright's design philosophy, promoting a sense of well-being and inspiration. Wright continually modified and expanded Taliesin West. He added a drafting studio, dining facilities, three theaters, a workshop, his office, and private living quarters. The complex also included residences for apprentices and staff, all connected by walkways, terraces, pools, and gardens. Wright designed the interior furniture and decorations, which were crafted on site by apprentices. The general plan of Taliesin West reveals a sprawling layout along a rotated east-west axis, perfectly adapting to the desert landscape. From the main entrance, the complex unfolds into a series of structures connected by pathways, terraces, pools, and gardens, all designed to harmonize seamlessly with the natural surroundings. Frank Lloyd Wright's office is set at a 45-degree angle to the rest of the complex, creating a dynamic orientation that breaks from traditional building alignments. The office roofs are high on the north side and slope down to the south, with beams extending out of the structure and wrapping around the stone walls in two 90-degree turns. The drafting studio, or design room, is one of the central structures of Taliesin West. It is accessed through a long pergola from Wright's office. Six stone pillars support the cross beams, which in turn hold the slanted roof beams, configured similarly to those in the office. Linen canvas panels stretched over wooden frames are aligned between the large beams, allowing diffused natural light to enter. The kitchen, known as the galley, is located east of the drafting studio and has a nautical association, likened by Wright to a ship's galley. Adjacent to the kitchen at right angles is the dining room, featuring a loggia that offers open views of the McDowell Mountains to the north. The Wright's quarters are situated in a long wing next to the breezeway, including a bathroom, kitchen, two bedrooms, a sitting room, and a gallery. At the end of the sitting room, there is a smaller bathroom. This area is designed to offer comfort and protection against the desert elements, with an enclosed garden to the east providing a tranquil retreat. The small cinema, known as Kiva, and the U-shaped building for apprentices are located north of the Wright's quarters. These accommodations feature separate bathrooms for men and women and are surrounded by low stone walls that provide protection against various desert creatures. The prow area in the southern part of the complex contains sunken gardens and lawns, creating an oasis in the desert. Here, a triangular pool is located, a luxury in the desert environment. The Sunset Terrace, situated east of the garden room, is a spacious area with deck furniture and lounges. Taliesin West was not just a residence and studio, it was a vibrant community. The Taliesin Fellowship's hands-on architectural education was complemented by an active calendar of lectures, evening entertainment, 
concerts, and theatrical performances. Wright's dedication to creating a holistic learning environment is evident in the meticulous design and organization of the complex. Wright's dynamic presence at Tallison West was palpable. He would return each winter and immediately begin making changes, improving designs and addressing new challenges. His influence extended to every aspect of the complex, from the architecture to the activities that took place within its walls. Today, Taliesin West is a World Heritage Site and a National Historic Landmark. It continues to serve as the headquarters of the Frank Lloyd Wright Foundation, which carries on many of the fellowship's traditions. A small number of legacy fellows who lived and worked with Wright still reside on the grounds maintaining the living history of the site. The Frank Lloyd Wright Foundation and other organizations are dedicated to preserving Taliesin West and ensuring its legacy endures. These associations work tirelessly to maintain the site, educate the public, and promote Wright's architectural principles. Taliesin West is a masterpiece that showcases Frank Lloyd Wright's innovative spirit and his profound connection to the natural world. It stands as a testament to his architectural genius and his ability to create spaces that are both functional and deeply inspiring. As we explore the history, design, and activities of Taliesin West, we gain a deeper appreciation for Wright's vision and the enduring legacy of this remarkable site. This script provides a comprehensive overview of Taliesin West, covering its historical context, architectural design, life and activities, and efforts to preserve its legacy. It aims to offer a thorough understanding of the project from an architect's perspective, making it accessible and engaging for your YouTube audience.